Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So, welcome back, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic Sunday. My name is Andy with Boatworks today, and this week we're starting the fairing process on this little boat behind me here to get ready for a new paint job. So, mix up a drink, uh, unless it's morning. Ah, hell, who cares? It's a weekend. <laughs> Let's get started. So I finished sanding all of the, all the glass in the hull here, and in total, I think that took about six hours, give or take. Uh, let me flip the camera around so you can get a better look at how, kind of the, how the surface actually looks. Now, if you look at the, at the surface, you notice that there are no glossy spots, like anywhere. And the reason I mentioned that is be, it, it's kind of tying into what I was talking about last week with using gel coat for actually curing the glass on here, because if, just to, as a quick recap, the, uh, I did all the glass on here using uh, the Total Boat, uh, the laminating polyester resin. Now, in order to cure that, you have to go over top of something, and I mentioned last week that my preference is uh, for using a waxed gel coat. Now, when you're looking at this, basically all the white that you're seeing in here, that's obviously, that's the gel coat. And the, the more of this pinkish stuff, well, that's the, where I actually send it down to bare glass. As it is right now, this surface, it, it's not completely smooth, but I would say it's probably 85% smooth. Uh, the, the gel coat that's left on here, although you, you still see it, the gel coat itself has been sanded. That's why there aren't any glossy spots on here. And that's important for when we're coming over in our next step, when, which is when we're going to be laying down our fairing, uh, is because the surface that the fairing is going to be going down to, that has been sanded, which is why it's a, a somewhat of a dull surface. Now, had I not used the gel coat, uh, say I gone over with something thin, say like, uh, like a PVA or polyvinyl alcohol, all these areas that you see in here that are white, well, these would be low spots. Because I went over and used the gel coat to, I guess, to, to cure all this off, again, like I mentioned last week, it gives a little bit of build. And basically, after the sanding that I just did here uh, yesterday, uh, the entire surface is thoroughly, thoroughly sanded. So I'm going to get a very, very good bond, mechanically bond, or mechanical bond, with the, with the, uh, the fairing compound when I go over this. So but before I can do anything more, I need to actually clean the surface a little bit more because as you can see, well, it's still a little bit dusty. <laughs> and for, for wiping this down, uh, ideally what I, what I would typically do, uh, if I could bring the boat outside because I don't want to you know, make a big mess in here, uh, but I would actually scrub the boat down using, uh, say, like warm water and Comet, you know, like Comet scrubbing cleaner stuff. Just to, just because it does a very, very good job at removing any, uh, removing dust and everything else. But because I don't want to do that, I'm just going to go through, I'm going to give this a very thorough wipe down using, actually, this stuff. Now this is, it's a de-waxer and a, and a surface cleaner. Now, to be honest, this is all I've been using for 
I would say well over the past year. I mean, in the, usually I, I would you know, be using acetone for something like this, but I gotta be honest, um, acetone, although it works, oh, my wife's here, <laughs> although it works, uh, it evaporates so quickly. I mean, to the point where you really don't have much working time uh, before the, uh, your, your towel and the surface has just kind of basically flashed off and you know, it's, you're, you're basically pushing around a dry rag. Now, the, uh, the surface cleaner, uh, you get a lot longer working time with that. And longer working time means you get to actually, uh, more time to actually wet the surface, come back with a dry rag, and actually wipe up any wax that, or contaminants that would be on the surface here. So I've been using this stuff, uh, like I said, for over the past year, and I'm using this for everything from surface wipe down to even to uh, cleaning up tools, which again was something I've always used acetone for, but this stuff just seems to work better. I, again, just mainly because I get a longer working time. So I'm gonna be using this. We're gonna go over the entire boat uh, using a two rig method. So I'm gonna wipe it down, uh, get the surface, uh, I guess, wet, and then come back with a dry, clean paper towel and then wipe that up and let it all evaporate, and then we should be start. Then we should be good to start mixing up our fairing compound. So now, when you're doing the wipe down here, you may actually have to go over the surface two, three times. Uh, but basically, what you're looking for is after everything is dried off and you've and you've gone over it, you want to be able to take a clean glove and basically wipe it without getting any kind of residue on your hands. So this is uh, good to go. Um, yeah, we're good to go. So I'm gonna let this uh, the solvent kind of flash off for a little bit longer. Uh, let me get the fairing compound compound down here. Get everything kind of I guess organized and uh, start getting some stuff mixed up. Now, with the exception of doing the actual, uh, I guess, repair work, so like, you know, getting holes patched, that kind of thing, with the exception of that, fairing is probably one of the most, if not the most time-consuming steps in getting, a, getting a, a, a project ready for painting. Now, typically, uh, on a boat this size, this is a 16-foot boat, and on something this size, it will typically take me about three, about three applications, you know, to, to get it to get it right. So that means laying it up, sanding it, laying it up, sanding it, and then laying it up one time, and then your final, you know, sanding with a little bit of a less coarse uh, grit paper. Now, for this week, because the end of this week is already kind of closing on me pretty quick, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to get this thing start to finish in this video. So I've, just because fairing is such an important topic, I think I'm probably, we'll see how this goes, but I think this is probably gonna end up being split up over, uh, over this video and then uh, also next week's. Because uh, the, the thing about fairing, or when you're talking about a paint job, uh, I'm sure we've all, all heard the saying that, you know, a good paint job is, what, 90, 95% prep, and then 5 to 10% actual painting. I mean, you could have the best paint in the world, you could have the most experienced painter in the world. If the surface isn't where it needs to be, it's still going to look like poodoo. So, fairing is kind of a big deal. Now, when I'm planning out how I'm gonna, I guess, apply each, each of the three steps, I, I typically break these down into three different application times, right? So, in particular, especially on the very first application. Now, typically, I'll address the worst areas first, and then the second application, I'm gonna be doing what's called hot coating. So, essentially, what that means is I'll be able to go back over top uh, with the second coat, I'll be able to go over top of what I laid down first, while it's still, before it cures. So I mean basically if, if you can still make a, a dent in it or a mark in it with your fingernail, it's set up enough where you can trowel over it again uh, and that's what's called hot coating. Basically you're, you're not going wet on wet, you're just letting it kind of half cure and then you can go over top of it again with the second or third layer without having to sand in between coats. So I'm gonna approach this much the same way that someone would be doing drywall, right? Because uh, the whole point is to try and minimize the amount of sanding that you have to do. I know that there are people that really get off on having to do a lot of sanding I am not one of them, all right? <laughs> There's a reason my shoulders are in the condition that they are. So I like to try and keep the sanding to an absolute minimum while still getting the, the results that I'm looking for. So just like with drywalling, multiple thin coats are gonna be much more efficient time-wise than say, you know, one thick coat that you just dog pile on the hull and you're setting yourself up for a way, way too much sanding. So at least for this uh, initial first round uh, that we're gonna be doing here shortly, I'm gonna address First, I'm gonna address the worst areas. So for the most part, there, uh, off the top of my head, there's three areas that I'm gonna hit initially. And that's gonna be essentially, basically the center line, running down the full length, because remember when I laid my glass, I left a small separation between this side and that side. So that's a low spot, that's gonna need uh, much more fairing than the rest of the hull. So that's gonna be spot number one. Uh, spot number two is actually going to be along the sides. Uh, where there was a, a bit of a separation where I had to lay in this lower piece 
as a second separate piece than this higher. And by doing that, well, it creates this little, little bit of a seam here. Even though they're overlapped, uh, it does create a bit of a hump. So I'm going to have to blend this up into here first on both sides. But after about probably a half hour or an hour in the temps that are in the shop, which I, this is about 65 degrees in here, uh, the, the initial coating that I put down, or the initial fairing that I put down, it's still going to be a little bit soft, but you should be able to touch it without it, you know, sticking to your finger. You should still be able to make a dent in it with your fingernail, but not necessarily have it stick to your finger. Once it's at that point, then I'm going to come in and with a, a little bit of a larger trowel, and I'm going to work that area again, but I'm going to extend that out to a larger area. So if the initial spot was, say, I don't know, four inches wide, uh, the second application is probably going to be closer to maybe a foot, between a foot to a, uh, one to two feet wide. And then third application will then tie everything together. And the third application is primarily going to be focusing on the areas that need the least amount of fairing. So now the fairing compound I'm going to be using is going to be Total Fair. Now I, I, I want to make a couple of little notes about this here. Uh, because we're finishing with, uh, we're going to be finishing this project using paint, specifically Alexio, uh, epoxy, an epoxy-based fairing compound is going to be the best type of compound that you can use just because when it cures, it shrinks the least. And epoxy, you know, it doesn't just cure overnight. It typically takes a couple of weeks, if not longer, for it to actually fully cure start to finish. And it's during that process that, uh, you know, an epoxy-based compound is going to shrink the least. Now, when you're talking about, say, paint jobs uh, that are a very, very high gloss finish, any kind of uh, defect, uh, I guess, you know, ripple in the surface, anything that's not perfect, uh, you're going to see it because it's because paint is such a high gloss. Now, I like using this stuff specifically because, well, one, it's just, it's, it's convenient. You know, basically you take one part and one part, you mix them together and it's, and it's ready to go. There isn't any additional fillers that you got to throw in there. It's just, you know, take it out of the can, mix it up and you're ready to rock and roll. Now, the best part about this stuff is that uh, after it's cured and you're sanding it the following day or whenever you happen to get around to that, uh, when you're sanding it, a lot of uh, other uh, epoxy-based fairing compounds, when you sand them, you're left with these little tiny little pinholes in the surface. And for painters, uh, pinholes are the bane of a project. I mean, that's just, it's one of the most frustrating things. Yeah, I mean, you, you can spend a week just chasing down pinholes. You don't really get that with this stuff, which is why I like it. So now while I'm getting this mixed up here, something that I forgot to mention uh, just a minute ago uh, about this, well, not necessarily this particular fairing compound, uh, but all epoxy-based fairing compounds. Uh, now remember, we're going to be finishing this little sailboat off here with paint. And I said that an epoxy-based fairing compound, when you're going to be painting, is the best choice. Now, if you're going to be finishing off with gel coat, uh, an epoxy fairing compound is not going to be your friend uh, because with gel coat, gel coat being a polyester based material, you're going to want to stick with either a polyester or a vinyl ester uh, based fairing compound just because you're going to be going over top of that with gel coat. If you were to try and go over top of, well let's just say this fairing compound specifically, if you're going to try and go over top of this with gel coat, most likely your gel coat isn't going to fully cure. And that's not, uh, you know, a, a knock on this product or any other of the, uh, you know, epoxy-based fairing compounds. That's just the nature of trying to go over top of epoxy with a, a polyester-based product. Now, this stuff, this total fair, this gets mixed one-to-one. -one. So I should have put this pile a little bit further over. But I'm going to take uh, and try and make a second pile here roughly about the same, the same size. Ultimately, what I'm going to be looking for here is when it's mixed, uh, there's a certain shade of green that I that I like to uh, like to see here. And that right there, that is the color green that I'm looking for. Is it actually showing up on camera here? It's just a nice, even, consistent, uh, just a light kind of olive green. And as long as I'm not seeing any streaks of either the yellow or the blue, that means we're thoroughly mixed. Time to get her down.
All right, so it has been a little over an hour, and the, uh, the, the little bit of epoxy that we, that we laid up on the first round, uh, that's ready to go, but let me show you how to test that real quick. All right, so basically you can see, I can touch it, I don't leave any kind of a fingerprint in here, but if I wanted to, I can dig my nail in there. So, pretty easy. It may, st even, it, it may still even be a little bit tender right now, uh, but I'm fine to go over it. Basically what I'm looking for is I want to be able to trowel over it, uh, you know, along, along the edges without tearing it up. And I, I think I'll be all right. Um, if I were to let this go even for another hour or two, I think I'd still be fine. Uh, I don't know that I'd push it any longer than, say, f three, maybe four hours. And again, that's then my temperatures. It's about 65 in here. Now, if you're outside in summertime and it's like 85, 90, you're going to want to stick a little bit closer to the one hour mark if you're going to try and hot coat. So uh, I've got a lot of epoxy to mix up. I'm going to try and get this whole top section here uh, troweled out. And we'll see what time it is and we'll see if I run out of, uh, run out of materials again. So. Hopefully not. <laughs> Well, it is the following day, and last night, uh, it, it, it was starting to get late. I was running out of steam, and to be honest, my shoulders were pretty well cooked. So I, uh, I pretty much had to call it quits. But I'm, I'm happy with everything that got done. Everything, for the most part, it turned out good. I mean, this is one of those situations where done is actually better than perfect. So uh, the reality is, is that when you're laying up this much material uh, over this large of an area, you're never going to get it perfect on the first coat. That's what the second and third coats are, is for refining uh, you know, what didn't go so well on the first round. <laughs> but let me show you how everything turned out. Okay, so overall, I mean, as you can see here, there's some areas that are thin and other areas that aren't. Now, I'm not sure yet because I haven't started sanding. I'm not sure if these are actual, uh, you know, where they got scraped a little bit hard when I was trawling everything out, or if these are actual high spots and that's the reason they got shaved down. Uh, I suspect it's probably a little bit of a combination of both. But I was able to get the entire boat uh, covered with the exception of two small areas uh, on both the port and the starboard side. So, but that's all right. Overall, it came out pretty smooth. It's, again, it's not perfect. There's little, little, rip, little uh, dimples here and there and uh, trawling lines, but that's all right. Beauty about fairing compound, at least it sands easy. <laughs> So let me show you the other side. I did not record this side just because you saw me do the, uh, the one and I figured, well, it's just a wash and uh, a rinse and repeat. And I think you pretty much got the idea. Now this side is a bit larger that I still need to fill than the other. Uh, on my last round when I was uh, working up on the bow up here, I had a little bit too much mixed up. So I thought, well, I'm not gonna waste it. So then I brought, went over to uh, the side that we started on, and I just kind of touched up the last little bit, uh, starting in this back corner here. 
So now, because it is the following day, this stuff has cured. Again, it, it's not fully cured, but it's cured enough to work. Uh, epoxy being what it is, it, it usually takes about a week or two or sometimes more uh, for it to actually fully, fully cure. But that's all right. We're, right now, all we need it is cured enough to be able to sand and actually sand nice and clean without uh, gumming up the sandpaper. So, because this is cured, I need to come in and basically I'm going to sand off uh, around the area that needs to be covered. So I'm going to basically, you know, go about two, three inches in all the way around the perimeter that has not been uh, uh, fared in yet. I'm also probably going to give the area that needs to get sealed uh, or that needs to get fared uh, probably another little kiss with some sandpaper. I'm going to be using 80 grit. And at that point, uh, we're going to give it another wipe down with the surface cleaner and uh, the de-waxer. And then mix up some more mud and uh, get this stuff uh, trawled on. And right now we wait. In fact, I'm gonna let this cook over the weekend and let it do its thing and then come in Monday morning and well, that's when we start sanding and well, that's when we'll really find out how well this actually went. So uh, with that said, I think this is gonna be a good spot to end this video. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this and if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you in advance, really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, uh, leave those down below. I'll do my best to get back with you. And as always, thank you for time. Thanks for watching, have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. This has been a Boatworks Today Protection.